Hey, you're watching with Wendy and today I'm going to show you how I made this dress. It is backless and it laces up and it's very easy. <laughs> This dress was requested for me to make from one of my friends, Natalie. You may recognize her from when I went on a trip to Europe with her last year. It's perfect for prom, wedding. If you want to make it more casual, don't make it full length like I did. But since we were going for a wedding environment for Natalie, we went all the way to the ground. What's really great about this dress is that it's very easy. Also, you can do it in any color you want. And the back is completely customizable. There's lots of different ways you can lace it up because you are one of a kind. And I know prom and weddings are those environments where you don't want to be wearing the same thing as someone else. I mean, to start off, if you make this, you made your own dress. So chances are it's not gonna be the same as anyone else. But secondly, if you make this dress, you can actually wear it different ways multiple times and that keeps things kind of exciting. The most complex part to fit will be the top. I cut out a pattern piece that works well for Natalie and I'll include a link to it below. Even that part is not terribly difficult. And then the rest of the skirt is just gathering up some chiffon. As usual, I have the full details and measurements in a link below just so that I can move quickly through the steps of the tutorial and not have to stop all the time and talk super technical. If you like how it looks in the end, let me know. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please feel free to do so. I upload new tutorials every week. There's some extra photos on my Instagram and also in that link below that I mentioned. That's all I have to say to introduce this dress. There are a couple of steps, but you can do it. Let's get on with the tutorial. Okay, to begin, I folded a piece of fabric in half and cut out two symmetrical pieces. These are gonna form the top of the dress. I'll put a link down below to the pattern that I used is a shape that I had cut out to match what my friend was looking for in the top. To get this to lie nicely on the chest, you'll probably need to add darts on both sides. My pattern includes the spot to add the darts and you can adjust these darts based on the height and the amount of curve you need for your chest. With the fabric still folded, flip it over to the other side, place down the pattern again and trace out the darts in symmetrical position. To sew these two straight lines together along the dart, what I do is I use pins and I insert them along the lines going all the way down the length of the dart. That way I know if I sew along the pins, it will cover both lines. Fold your fabric along the edge that has been pinned and sew with a straight stitch from the outside all the way to the inner corner. Repeat this on all four of the darts, then we're going to place these two pieces right sides together. I add pins all around the outer edge so that we can sew them together. This is going to make sure that on the outside it looks nice and clean and there's a hidden dart and then on the inside there's a lining so you don't have all this fabric ruffling up against your chest. Now for some straps, I cut two pieces of cord that were 13 inches in length in total, fold them in half and tie them together with a knot. Tuck the entire cord inside of the dress and leave the end with a knot aligned with the peaks of the front. Pin this strap in place and make sure that the knot is on the outer side of that pin. Once those two cords are in place, you can go ahead and use a straight stitch across the entire M shape of the outside. Before you flip it inside out, cut a few slits in the front center and also cut off any excess fabric that's near the straps. Once you flip the entire thing inside out, here's how it's going to look. We're gonna go ahead and seal the bottom using a zigzag stitch. Now for the waistband, I have a piece of fabric that is about four inches wide and completely long enough to go all the way around the waist plus an inch of seam allowance. Fold the waistband in half so that the right side is on the outside and then also fold the top in half. It doesn't really matter which side because it's right on both sides. Then go ahead and place the top on the waistband and pin it down in a straight line. We're gonna sew the top to the waistband right down the middle of the waistband with a straight stitch. Once that's done, fold the waistband in half and seal the outer edge with a zigzag stitch. Now we can move on to the skirt. The skirt I made has three layers in total. The innermost layer was crepe fabric and then the outer outer two were the same chiffon. The first step is to take every single layer and sew two straight lines that are parallel all along the top edge. Use the longest stitch length possible because we're just using these stitches to help gather the fabric. Once you have the two parallel lines on one side, you're going to tie together the ends of the strings that are on the top edge of the fabric. And if we make our way to the other side, we're gonna tie together the two strings that are coming out on the bottom edge of the fabric. After that's done, when you pull on the free strands that do not have a knot tied on them, the fabric will be to gather itself. Keep gathering until it's the same length as the waistband. Again, I put all of my full measurements in the description for you. Once you're done, tie a knot at the end to keep it secure and cut off any excess thread. There might be a lot. You can repeat this for the two layers of chiffon and that will give you three layers for the skirt in total. The reason why I did one inner layer of crepe was to make sure that it would be totally opaque. And then the two layers of chiffon on top help it look flowy and light. Using 
safety pins, I put all three layers together with the right sides all on top and sew those together with a straight stitch. Take your time because it's a lot of fabric to work through. Once that's done, you can sew the waistband to the skirt with the right sides together. The next step is to add the invisible zipper to seal off the back. I open up the invisible zipper and take one end, pin it to one side of the opening. The way you pin invisible zippers is you always pin them to the right side of the fabric and have the teeth of the zipper on the opposite side of the raw edge. The zipper should reach all the way up to the waistband, but you want to try to only sew it to the crepe layer that is the innermost layer. That way, when you zip it up, you can still have the chiffon flow freely. Make sure both ends of the zipper match in height so that they're symmetrical. And if you've never sewn an invisible zipper before, I've included a link below for you that will get you started. Now with the rest of the crepe that is below the zipper, we're going to sew it right sides together using a straight stitch all the way down to the bottom. But for the chiffon layers, start sewing them together from the bottom of the skirt and go all the way up until you're roughly at the bottom of the zipper. This makes it so that when the skirt is zipped up, there's no bunching in the chiffon, but if you actually reach through the chiffon, you can get to the zipper that is on the crepe layer. This is the technique that I use whenever I'm dealing with tulle or chiffon because I find incorporating them into the zipper makes it very bunchy and weird. Okay, we are now moving into the part of the dress that is customizable. So I cut two pieces of cord that were the same length. As long as they're over a yard in length, you should be okay. I tied a knot on one of the ends of each cord and we're gonna tug that into the back of the dress. Fold over the piece of fabric that is attached to the invisible zipper, tuck that cord inside of that fold and sew it shut with a straight stitch. Here's a close up of how they look. You're gonna have the two strands peeking out of the back top of the waistband. To wear the skirt, loop one of the back strings through the straps that we've put into the front by just going in one side and out the other side of the loop. It's basically like creating a pulley system for your own dress, and this is what makes it totally customizable so that you can tie it up however you like, but it also makes it so that it's always going to fit you just right because you can adjust the strap length. We're on the last little section of steps. Take a piece of fabric that is from when we made the top and cut that into a long rectangular strip. I fold that strip inwards into thirds and then sew the entire thing in place with a zigzag stitch down the middle. Once it's been sewn into a little cord, fold it in half and then cut that whole thing into six little pieces. With each of these little pieces, fold them in half and then sew the loose ends together to make a little loop. With a straight stitch, I attached one little loop just under the dart on the side, one little loop that was on the inner corner of the front, and then also one little loop that was on the bottom. I repeated this on both sides of the dress to make it symmetrical. These are the loops that you'll be using to create all the customizable designs of the dress. It can be pretty hard to put the cord through the loop by itself, so I have a tip for that too. On the day of the fitting, we got in and out of all the different designs really quickly by using a bobby pin, shoving that through the loop, then shoving the cord through the open end of the bobby pin, and then pulling it through the loop kind of like how a needle threader works. With that, you can create so many different designs. I have four here just as an example. I've drawn a couple of arrows to show you which way to go with the threads and really it's up to your imagination to go as simple or as complicated as you like. When you're done stringing through everything, take the loose ends of the cord, tie it around the last loop and then tuck the cord into the dress so that it's hidden away. There you have it, a backless lace up dress just for you. After Nat tried it on last week, there are a couple of modifications that I'll be making to it to make it fit her perfectly. One is I'll probably reduce the amount of fabric that's up in the tummy area because sometimes under some angles it looked like she was growing a little bit of a baby bump, which she's not. And the other thing was we wanted to put in a leg slit. Oh, and also at the upper back of the zipper, you might want to add a hook and eye to really close that off. It'll make the whole thing look a bit cleaner. I didn't get it done in time for our shoot, but that's what I'm going to be adding. I do actually have some extra news. I have a giveaway going on right now. If you haven't heard about it, I'm giving away these sewing kits that I assembled. This is the sewing kit. It's got all sorts of sewing essentials inside of it. It seems to be the object that the people are most interested in is this golden crane scissor. There's a link below to the video where you can enter this giveaway. It's also on my Instagram. Just find the photo of this and you can enter to win. And that's that. Hope you like it. Hope you subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.